Hi, this is Crystal from DaughtersOfTheCreator.com. Thank you for joining me for our Sundays at 7 Ministry Moment. I think that's what I'm going to call it. And um, I am just so grateful for the number of people who have continued to watch and comment and share. Thank you so much for that. And I just pray that God continually use it for his purpose and will for however long he wants to use it. I do want to just encourage those, if you haven't already um, purchased the Seriously God devotional, that there is a volume one and a volume two. And again, it's always great to start a devotional at the beginning of the year. And as well, if you know someone who's going through a divorce or a sickness or just a difficult life change, that this might be a great uh, devotion for them because it really helped me get through my significant change and it still seems to be helping a lot of other people. So today, I want to talk to you about who is your boss. And it's based on the scripture, Colossians 3, 23 through 24, which, has, which it says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive an inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. And it's just an interesting day and age of trying to figure out who is the boss right now. And I'll just, you know, I'll just share a little bit of my personal testimony. I remember it was about now, five years ago, and uh, sitting before God, and uh, at that time, I realized that all the charge of taking care of our five children, which at that time, my son was still at home, but he was uh, joining the military um, shortly afterwards, um, fell on my shoulders. I was accustomed to being a stay-at-home mom and taking care of the kids and everything that had to do with the house. And now I was responsible for all that and becoming the sole breadwinner of the family. And when I was sitting there praying, I just... On my knees at a window, I'll never forget it, with my hands open, and I said to God, I've got nothing. I've got nothing. And even though, quite honestly, I worked my role as a stay-at-home mom like a job. I worked it that way. But that wasn't paying the mortgage, you know. That wasn't insurance and benefits. And, and, and at that point in time, I had a son leaving from military, a daughter going to college, two in high school and one in middle school. And I said to God, I got nothing. And a few months later, God opened up a job opportunity and I was able to uh, find full-time employment, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm still in that job as well as this part-time ministry of writing and speaking. And since, you know, if I take from the time I was 16 years old working in a restaurant to now, I've had so many different types of jobs. It's just amazing when I look over the course of my lifetime. But here's the thing. I always had the same boss, and that's the capital B boss. And that's Jesus Christ. I always, I remember even going in at 16 years old, saying to myself, God has opened this door for me, and I really want to work it so that he gets the glory and he gets the honor. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, that's who your boss is. And I know it gets hard. I mean, I've had some pretty yucky jobs and, and bosses who weren't, um, you know, people of integrity. So I know it's hard sometimes, but if I kept who my real boss was and was faithful to it, the reward comes from him. So I want to talk to you a little bit about B-O-S-S. -S. What does it mean when Jesus is our boss? And the first B, or the only B, stands for bring your best game today. You know, I know for me, in the humdrum of our week, as we're going through and and it just get you know because hey, check it out it's Sunday night and if you're like me when I get done with this I got to figure out what am I gonna eat this week what am I wear this week um, what email I need to check what what things are hitting me so that when I come into work Monday I am just not completely lost and sometimes it just makes you feel like oh another week you know and uh, and, and Monday everybody's like oh it's Monday but you know what it's Monday it's the day the Lord has made. And so I have to decide, I'm going to bring my best game today. And the truth is, each one of us, you know, we're going to stand before God and we're going to give an account. And I don't care if you're a secretary, a waitress, if you're a CEO, if you're an analyst, an engineer, I don't care what you do. You are going to stand before God and give an account. What did you do with that role that I put you in? 
How did you work it? You know, did you show up and you just show up? Or did you show up? You showed up early and you showed up ready to be engaged because you know who your real boss is. And what I like to do on uh, Mondays, I, I typically, you know, get to work and before I get out the car, I put my hands up before God and I just say, God, I need your wisdom and guidance and strength to bring my best game today. I need you to just give me to know the things that I don't know, to see the things I don't see. And then I try, I don't always do that, you know, but on Fridays I try to remember to stop. And when I get in my car and say, thank you, God, for another work week. Um, strengthen me and refresh me over the weekend so I can be ready and again to do this so this just the thing is when we bring our best game everybody around us wins everybody wins your your human boss your co-workers your peers everybody wins and I tell you what it's different when you go into a meeting and somebody who's on fire for God and I'm not saying they're out there you know preaching Jesus at the job you know many of us can't do that but the light of Christ is shining through them. You just know, you know, have you ever been with someone at work and you're just like, are you a Christian? <laughs> Cause you can just, the spirit in you let you know there's a spirit in them, the same spirit in them. So B is to bring your best game. O is to order your steps in integrity and righteousness. Proverbs 22, one, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and favor is better than silver or gold look at it this way when someone says your name my name crystal mcdowell or angie whiting or diane selby williams when they hear your name what do they say oh man i love working with them they really get the job done they really keep pushing it pushing it or are they like oh my gosh crystal she just it's just like she doesn't even care and, and she, 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 she's, just, she's just not engaged. You know, a good name is better than riches. And so when we show up, we ought to order our steps in integrity and righteousness. And righteousness means just doing the right thing. I mean, isn't it crazy right now? We see so much stuff out um, with, with people who, who just took advantage of, of their workers with, with, with sexual harassment. It's just simply amazing to me when I read the news right now. And the thing is, when we see all this, we have to understand that we are called to be people of outstanding character and integrity as a believer in Christ Jesus. And again, I am not saying, and you all know, you've heard me say this so many times, I am not saying that you need to be perfect. Only Jesus was perfect. But we are to be perfected in Christ. Meaning if we make a mistake, own up to it, you know, but at the same time, we hold on, we walk into work saying, I am going to be a man or woman of integrity. I'm going to do the right thing no matter what. And because we have the presence of the Holy Spirit within us, we're more drawn to do the right thing and we can trust the Holy Spirit. You know, if we pause, sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell us, don't say that, don't say that, don't say that, you know, just you know, it's like edit what you're going to say before it comes out of your mouth, right? And the thing is, it's not that God's saying to believers, you know what, sit in judgment for all those sinners around you. No, no, no. He's, he's, we're, we're ambassadors. We represent Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And I, I love how First Peter 4, 18 says it. And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and sinner? We are to be more than, conquer, more than conquerors in Christ Jesus at our jobs. And in addition, in Matthew 5, 13 through 14, Jesus said, we are the light and we are the salt. Have you ever had unsalted food? I mean, and I know many of us, we got to watch our salt because of blood pressure, you know, but have you ever had just plain, nothing in it, plain? I mean, you eat it because you're hungry and you need the nourishment. But if someone just add a little salt to that rice or potatoes, oh my goodness, it's like, it's like, you know, beauty in the mouth. It's wonderful. It's an enjoyment. That's who we are. We're not to be bland. We're to be the salt. We're the flavor of Christ at our jobs. We're the light. You know, we are the light and, and a lot of times we don't have to, you don't have to be coming around, running around saying the name Jesus, just be the light and people will be drawn to you. So the first, next S is to, 
set your line of sight directly to God. And the scripture I'm using for this is Psalms 121 verses 1 through 2. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I tell you what, Psalms 121, that whole chapter, is basically my 2018 focus. My help comes from the Lord. And, you know, I'm kind of just like you. Um, wake up sometimes and I just don't feel like going to work. And it could just that I'm just tired and I just want to sleep more. It could be that there's an issue and I'm like, I really don't want to deal with this. I just want it to go away. And I just go through those humdrum things. And it's in those times that I've learned right in that moment. Because see, if we stay in that moment too long, then we've got an attitude and we're irritated. We're irritated with our families as we're getting ready for work. We're irritated with our coworkers. We just, you just see somebody and something and you go, oh, not today. Not today. But what I'm telling you is, if you feel that at that moment, look to the heels from which comes your help. God will give you the strength and the grace to move forward. And I, I cannot tell you how many times I've experienced this when I just said, Lord, right now, I need you to strengthen me by the power of the Holy Spirit to get the work done that you've called me to do in this season of my life. And I don't know what, he sometimes, he just directs my attention somewhere different. He gives me an idea and he just, and then I'm just powered. I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit to take the day. Instead of letting the day take me, I take it in the power of God. And I just love it because as believers, our steps, every step, when you walk into work, every step you take is directed by God. There's no coincidence in him. You didn't just suddenly land in this job. He specifically chose you for that particular spot for his purpose. And you got to hold on to that because that means there's a purpose and there's a plan. And if we come in with an attitude and we come in all tired and I don't feel like being here, you know, then we might miss the opportunity that God is trying to put in front of us. I know when my kids were young and before they would go to school and when I was homeschooling, we'd always start, I'd always start the prayer with, um, this is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. And, you know, we've got to remind ourselves, set our line of sight directly to God. This is the day. Monday is the day. Tomorrow is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it because you know what? You don't know if you have Tuesday, but you got Monday. And you got an opportunity. And if the Lord called you home, at least you could look back and say, Lord, I gave Monday my best. And I set my eyes directly on you to invigorate my heart with a plan and a purpose. And the last S is to seek the Lord for your reward. It's another one of my favorite all-time scriptures. Proverbs 21, 1. The king's, I'm sorry, the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He, the Lord, turns it wherever he wills. You know, it's so interesting because sometimes we get so stuck on a person or a, a coworker or a boss and we're, you know, we're looking at them and God is saying, I am the one who's going to lead your boss or maybe your boss's boss in a direction to bless you. I have your reward. And I just love that scripture because it takes the pressure for me. It takes the pressure from looking at people. And sometimes I'm sitting there and I just have to remind myself, wait, 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 wait. I'm not working for you. You are the beneficiary of me working for Christ. But I am really God's ambassador in this role right now. Amen. And let's face it. The world isn't fair. And many of us have been passed on promotions or raises. Some of us have been unfairly fired or laid off. And it's really difficult to maneuver the waters of righteousness when we got such a sin-filled environment in some places. But keep this in mind. God has a reward for you. God is going to take care of you because he said, I will take care of all your needs according to his riches and glory. He's going to take care of your needs. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's going to provide the job and the money, what you need to take care of your family. But here's our part. It requires us to be faithful in our prayer and our Bible study time. Because when we are having that constant conversation with God, it changes things. I don't know about you, but when I wake up, as soon as I wake up, my conversation with God begins. 
you know, uh, first Peter five, seven, cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. I just wake up talking to him. Here's what I see, God. Here's what I see. God, give me grace. Give me strength. Help me to do these things for you. And I love it because in James 4, 8, he says, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. Have you ever been at work and just sensed the presence of God and nobody else? Everybody just seems to be going, but you can just know, you know, you know Jesus is here, right here, right now. You know, I started this lesson with my personal testimony of praising to God and saying, I got nothing. But the truth is, because I had God in my life, I had everything. I have everything. I have every opportunity right now to live the best life in this season. And you know what? I'm not alone because some of you right now listening, you might be saying or feeling you've got nothing. You know, maybe you haven't been able to find a job or maybe the job that you have right now is just it's just it's just hard. And you're just dragging yourself every day saying, God, could you open up another door? But I want to remind you everything you need, everything for your mind, your spirit and your body and your checking account and your bills, everything you need is in Christ Jesus. He is a God, not just of yesterday. He is the God of today and forevermore. And keep in mind, what doors God opens, no man can shut. He's going to open the door for you. Be faithful and don't be afraid. Don't let Satan tell you to be afraid to apply for a job or afraid to interview because fear, and I have a blog coming up, fear is not your friend. You know, God has given you power through the Holy Spirit so that you can do the application or you can do the interview or God can lead you to the person who can help you with your interview or help you with your application. One day we're all going to hear, and I hope to hear this, and I hope for you to hear this. Well done, thou good and faithful servant, for the work we have done, if we just hold on and keep the faith. Just again to repeat. B, bring your best game every single day. O, order your steps with integrity and righteousness. S, set your line of sight directly to God. And S, seek the Lord for your reward. I pray you've been blessed and I pray that you would continue to join me for Sundays at seven, uh, you know, just a moment teaching whatever you want to call it. And if you've been blessed, I ask that you would share this with other family members and friends, maybe people who are struggling in their job and just need that little bit of encouragement to make it through the day. This is Crystal from DaughtersTheCreator.com. Please visit us on uh, Facebook on, uh, and let me know your thoughts. And if God has blessed you, share it. Let us know because that's what keeps me going. That's the steam that keeps me going in this ministry is knowing that God is using it to help his people. God bless you and have a very blessed work week. Bye for now.